here we have some um, jeans. Seats were definitely need some work. Gonna be a job for real. Told me this was a totally different car. I would probably believe it. So we are about to hit a mileage milestone here. Super cool. Hey everyone and welcome back to DC Motorworks. We are back today with the Horde GT. Our good technician Evan here is about to pull the seats out and uh, we're gonna get to town. Today we've got Bam here from Bam Cunningham to make the first round of uh, mold remediation so that we can safely drive this without uh, all the hacking and coughing I did last week from spending some time in here. And I'm gonna turn it over to him, and tell him what we're gonna do. So today we're gonna target all the mildew and the mold. Basically we have to get to the source because if we don't get to the source of it and remove it all and disinfect it all, it's gonna come back. And we definitely don't want the owner coming back and riding through that. Uh, it's gonna be hard to breathe and probably not safe for your health. So definitely stay tuned for what we got coming. So first step here is to get the seats out, but um, we got to decide what we're going to do with the uh, leftovers here. We have some um, jeans, not sure, but these uh, these came with the car. So jeans and towels that are, I'm sure, um, they're scent of mold. So uh, we'll decide what to do those in a little bit if we want to burn them or give them away or I don't know. Evan's going to get the seats out, get us some access to uh, some more mold and uh, we'll go from there. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm just going to set it on your toolbox. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm just cleaning the car. I'm just doing a preliminary saline cleansing of the uh, interior. Saline, salt solution, oh, thank sweat. You. See how nicely it comes up with a little bit of sweat ground into it. Whew. It would look better. All right, so looking at it, seats were definitely need some work. The dash, the middle console, seems like the source of the mold is coming from underneath, but it could be probably from the door seals leaking down. The condensation is just sitting over time. This area here is pretty bad, but not too bad. Hopefully we can get this thing looking brand new again, like it's never there. All right, so we have the seat here. As you can see, I gotta protect myself. Uh, so that way I don't breathe in whatever this is. Uh, but it's pretty bad if you can see it starts from the bottom. That's where the severity of it is. Uh, it's a beautiful seat, by the way. It's got the carbon fiber backing. Uh, most of the luxury vehicles have that, but it didn't make its way to the back. So it's mostly on the bottom. We're gonna have to get to it all the way down here and then work our way up. So definitely gonna be a job for real agitate it, wipe it off, and then finish it off with the this, and then agitate it and wipe it off before we proceed. Because if it's too strong, it'll discolor it. The company advises that if it does change color, to stop what you're doing and find another way. So we're gonna do a little small area where it's not gonna be visible. Then we're gonna agitate it. Seems to be looking really good. Yeah, it looks brand new again. All right. And now we're waiting on our steamer. That looks really good. Steamer is gonna pull what we just put on there. And then we're gonna come back with a disinfectant. It's gonna block the mildew from coming back and then it'll be good to go. Give it a good scrub.
All right, so we have the driver's seat here. Uh, we hit it with the enzyme to disinfect it. And then we also steamed it to remove the chemicals from the disinfectant. But here we have the passenger seat. We're going over it with G-Technique. Tri-Coat is basically gonna seal the seat, keep that bacteria from coming back and also leaving a nice finish on the leather. The job was okay. And it, it got a little tough in certain areas where the buildup was really uh, bad. For the most part, it was straightforward and we're just getting into it. We're gonna start on the doors and work our way inside. Um, we noticed the, a lot of the buildup is in the frontal part of the cab, on the dash, the steering wheel, the shifters. Um, and then we noticed on the roof of the car, let's follow, let's take a look. Here, we got a lot of buildup on here and the panels on the side, the back. But what we didn't notice before was on the roof. That's really caked up. So it's definitely gonna take some time, a lot of elbow grease, a lot of scrubbing. And, but we're, it's gonna look good when we're done. All right, so we got the back firewall done. Um, we're working our way up to the dash and then moving up to the roof. Uh, so this was the lighter area, the dash and the roof is definitely gonna be the harder area so far. It's, it's pretty straightforward, a little time consuming. It's a three stage process that we have to go through just to make sure that it doesn't come back. Uh, but yeah, everything's looking good so far. So definitely looking forward to Perfect the complete project. All right, so we are wrapping it up. We just finished sealing everything. The transformation is insane. We didn't think it was gonna come back 100%. It actually did. Everything looks good, sanitary, and looks like nothing ever happened. All right, Cameron, we are just finished up. Cameron, you haven't seen this yet. We're gonna show it to you and you let me know what you think. Honestly, it looks like uh, if you told me this was a totally different car, I would probably believe it. I know Bam has been working uh, tirelessly with his associate Randy all day to uh, get us to this point to where we can uh, have lovely Evan here. Take a break from this nice AMG and get back on something super special, the Ford GT and put the seats back in so uh, we can do the best part, which is drive it 
and uh, see what it drives like after 15 years of being stationary. Total night and day. Great job, Bam. Thank we you, are thank you. Super excited you came out today to help us with this. It was fun. So now I can drive it without worry about uh, any lung disease or anything like that. Thank you again. Been a pleasure. So uh, we just discovered here that uh, in Bam's tireless work effort here that we, uh, we have a CD installed in the sweet Macintosh radio. I hate roosters. This is, uh, I've never heard of this before. The singing judge, Barry Medley. Well, we'll have to see what that sounds like. Uh, Paul, any ideas? This sounds like your type of thing, right? Oh, it's the, uh, the old roosters there. Uh, we'll find out and we'll see how this uh, Macintosh sound system sounds off camera uh, for good old uh, YouTube stuff there. And uh, maybe we'll find a new uh, type of music we like. But uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Evan. He's washing his hands now so he can uh, work in this nice, sweet, clean interior. And uh, we'll get some seats and we'll go for a ride. Stay tuned. So here we are in a nice clean interior of the Ford GT. We're gonna go ahead and start it up and uh, move it under its own power for the uh, first meaningful distance in over 15 years. First step will be the gas station because we only put about three gallons of fresh gas in here. Let's go for a ride. So we got good oil pressure. Engine temperature starting to come up. Uh, got some gauges to address here. See the fuel level's not quite working and our, at idle we're running about 2500 RPM, so not uh, ideal there, but uh, oil pressure's working. Our uh, boost vacuum gauge is working. Our voltmeter, so we've got uh, most of our gauges. We do need to see if our uh, speedometer works there, so we'll check that out. Do I dare try the air conditioner? What do you think? Evan? You want to you see if the AC works? You want to stick your stick your face in front of, the, in front of these vents? Mouse cage, squirrel cage. Oh, here the AC compressor. Sounds like it might be a little low. I hear a little bit of hissing. I'm gonna slowly turn up the blower here. Compressor just cycled again, so it sounds like it is low on Freon, but uh, compressor does work, so. Try defrost. Look at that. See, everything works. So uh, we will be checking the Freon level here, but um, We'll get cameraman to jump in and uh, we'll see what happens. No visible mold, and I'm not coughing, so big improvement. You can see even the uh, trip meter here has not been reset. Almost as nearly miles as on the vehicle. Make sure that works. Look at that. So we'll be able to see exactly how many uh, fresh miles get put on the Ford GT. Trying to take it gentle, get a feel for it. First impression, it doesn't feel as awful as I expected for uh, 15 year old stationary flat tires. Got our nice Ford Focus uh, blinker and wiper stocks here. Just relatively smooth. And look at that, our speedometer works. We're doing 50 ish. Rearview mirror has a great view. We've got the nice chunky supercharger back there behind us making all kinds of beautiful noises Ooh, mirrors work okay that helps a little with the visibility situation as does that one so uh, most everything in here seems to work we do have a check gauge light but like I say that's because of the fuel gauge and the tachometer that are uh, not quite gauging at the moment but uh, hopefully we'll have a solution for that here shortly throttle response is pretty insane, honestly. You just barely have to touch the throttle. See, we got our high beam indicator there and they were working. It's our rear defrost. That works. No check engine light. It's a car. Brakes actually feel pretty good. They don't feel too 
damaged by the rest. I will say, shifter action is pretty good. Even without bleeding in the clutch, it doesn't feel too terrible. It's a little mushy, but uh, some fresh fluid in there should hopefully take care of that. I do love the uh, massive Macintosh subwoofer. This was an option on these. I'm a bit of a uh, audiophile myself, so very nice to have the upgraded stereo. It is nice you get to look right back into the engine compartment. I mean, you can't really see behind you. It's essentially just a uh, engine compartment mirror. I've definitely felt worse tires. Uh, this is not uh, not hateful. 18-year-old Goodyears are uh, not what I want to test the limits of, if you ask my opinion. Let's get some gas in this thing and uh, make sure it starts again after we put some gas in here. If you want to know how to open the fuel door on your Ford GT, you've got a uh, key cylinder there, and then you pull that lever, and look at that, magic happens. Let's go ahead and uh, see how bad this one melts the credit card. With some premium fuel, no receipt. I do not need a reminder of how much uh, fuel we're going to put in this thing. It is a uh, capless filler all the way back in 2006. It's very commonplace these days to have a capless fuel filler, but uh, not so much in 2006. Kind of a neat little feature there. $65 later, we got about 16 gallons in there and probably had one or two left uh, from the three we put in it after driving here. And uh, let's head back to the shop and uh, like I said, no, no leaks or anything. So good signs. Let's head on back. Oh, goodness. God, I'm so terrified of that. See, we're just waiting on our uh, anti-theft to uh, Quit fussing at us there. Maybe I used the wrong key. Oh, that'll help. There are two keys. So this is the chip key. That's the one we want, but it should still work. So. Ah, it likes that better. Okay, good. about to hit a mileage milestone here at 3,333 miles. Look at that, 3333. Super cool. Well, that completes our inaugural drive in the Horde GT and uh, was a lot more enjoyable to sit in for this trip. And like I said, we got a fuel tank of gas and uh, everything seems to be working properly. So. Uh, we appreciate y'all tuning in and we'll see you on the next episode.